Welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with Mick from Erdetto. Hi, Mick. Hi, Andrea. Thanks for uh, coming here today. Uh, so tell us about Erdetto. What do you guys do? So um, Erdetto is a security company. We always say Erdetto, or sorry, security is in our DNA. Um, we've been, we're 50 years old this year. We've, our background is in content security, so media security, which we'll talk about here. But we also now work in connected transport security, smart homes, smart places security, connected manufacturing, and other areas also. Wonderful. So broad spectrum of different things. Always leveraging our security background and expertise. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So today, specifically, we are going to talk about multi-DRM solution. Yeah. For some of our viewers that may not be familiar with DRM, can you explain what is DRM? Yeah, so DRM is uh, digital rights management. It allows the owner of high value content, whether it be video, audio, whatever, um, encrypt that content and securely uh, pass the key from themselves, from the owner or the operator, to the user. Okay, excellent. So I see operator here on the screen, air data control. Uh, walk us through sort of an example, right? Sure. What happens first? Where does the operator come in? Okay, so if we, if we assume this is a, a use case where the user is watching a video, the user selects and downloads the video to their device from the operator, uh, from the operator's website or portal mm -hmm. or you know app. Yeah. Um, when the device sees the video, it will be able to tell because there's a indication within the video that says this is encrypted. So it says, okay, I need to get a key to decrypt this or a license mm -hmm. to decrypt this. It will send a message to the Erdetto control, which is our, the name of our multi-DRM solution, and we will check based on the user, the device type they're using on, where they're watching it, and so on. And if they're entitled to it, send them back a license, which includes the decryption key and some rules about how you can use it, where you can, you know, whether you can connect a HDMI device or a, uh, an external screen to your device, and whether how long the license is valid for, and so I on. I see. So, as a user, I can use multiple different, wide range of devices. Yes. Um, can you talk us a little bit more about what is the supported devices for your data control? Sure. So. Um, and uh, again, really good question because multi-DRM, the multi-part is to mm -hmm. support multiple DRMs. And the reason there are multiple DRMs is because different devices natively support different DRMs. So the, the three major DRMs in the world at the moment are Widevine, uh, PlayReady, and uh, FairPlay. And different devices will support one or, or several of those. Depending on the device or the, or the application on the device that requests the license, we'll send back the appropriate. I see. Uh, Appropriate license. Yep. So the your data con uh, control mechanism, the implementation is on AWS, and over yes. here we can see EC2, RDS. Walk us through kind of this architecture. Where does that start, right? So okay. you have content, encrypted content. Where does it start? Okay. So if we look at this flow here, which is the request coming mm -hmm. into your data, that will come in here to the uh, to a pod within our. Uh, we use Kubernetes, so pod within our Kubernetes cluster. So it'll come into a an adaption uh, module or uh, function for that particular DRM. So mm -hmm. whichever DRM it is, okay. um, that allows us decrypt the message, look at the <coughs> the content ID, and this will then speak to another function which contains our our rules. Pardon my writing. Um, which will allow yeah. us uh, apply rules for that particular content, make exactly. sure that user is entitled to see it, make sure that particular device type title to see it, maybe restrict some, some of the rules will restrict the resolution for particular devices okay. and so on. Um, and that will send a message back here. And assuming they are allowed to see it, we mm. will encrypt the DRM message and send it back out again. I see. Yeah. So there's a rules engine here. Where yep. is that data stored? So, we have we also have a uh, we have a function which we call our core function, mm -hmm. which allows us create the rules, allows us create policies, bundles, entitlements, and associate them with each other, and so on. All of these rules, and in fact, all of our stateful information is stored in our uh, in our control database, as we I call see. it, okay. using RDS. Interesting. Um, so you mentioned Kubernetes, and yeah. you implemented your Kubernetes on EC2, and within yes. the EC2, you mentioned pods as well. Okay. How do you orchestrate all this? So I see DRM A 
uh, core rules. There's multiple different components. How do you? What is the orchestration framework for uh, you know handling this this cluster? Okay, so we we you know we took a lot of input from our solutions teams, mm -hmm. um, our engineering team, our architecture team, our development operations team, all working together to to come up with the um, you know. The, the architecture that we felt would meet our requirements, and and allow us the, the you know the the most scalability and and so on. Okay. Um, the and a, a key target for us is also um, being able to deploy it on different clouds and also on premise because we have to be able to deploy it on premise. So, I see. Um, being agnostic to um, to to particular platforms is quite important to us. So we okay. went for Kubernetes. We use Helm to orchestrate the Kubernetes okay. um, clusters, and we use Helm charts, which allow us to find rules which talk about how the different pods, which mm. are, in our case, are essentially containers, I see. Um, uh, mapping on how they map onto particular EC2 host nodes, and s some of the rules talk about you know how many you pack on depending on what the you know the CP CPU level is on a particular core. How much memory has been used when you need to spin up another one? Some of the rules are to do with affinity rules, as they're called. I see. So you use the Helm chart to essentially come up with rules on how you can make sure that this is highly available, having multiple instances of your pods across multiple EC2 instances on your Kubernetes cluster. Exactly. Is that right? exactly. The, the Helm oh. chart is it 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 defines the rules, so it allows you. Uh, it allows you, for example, um, the core node. Mm -hmm. we, we generally would have at least one per availability zone. I see. And we would also, um, if, we, if we wanted to, if we had enough capacity, we needed to add another one. We would not add it, for example, here. We would add it on one of the other EC2s so that they're both not on the same yeah. EC2. So Sorry, I, 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 yeah. I'm using that as an example. You, could, you can write rules that allow you to do that type of thing. Uh, that's very interesting. So I could see, I mean, this could, we can talk about massive scale here. I can imagine, you know, content yeah. delivery. What are we looking at here? You know, how do you scale across this? Okay, so so um, scale is very important to us. We uh, in the last month, I think we delivered mm -hmm. 1.6 billion licenses. Actually, more than that, 1.6 billion licenses. So you can you can uh, you can understand wow. scale is very yeah. important to us. Absolutely. Um, the Kubernetes clusters, Kubernetes has a, a, a concept of a, of a master node and, and worker nodes, yep. and essentially you can scale as needed. There okay. You can set rules to decide to scale based on CPU or storage and so on. You scale up, you will generally scale and try and fill up the space in your mm -hmm. hosts, and then if you need a new host, you can spin up a new I host see. as well. Yep. And the reverse on the way down, which is obviously very important because <laughs> it's very expensive if you scale up and don't scale Absolutely. down again. And scaling down is again. It allows you to do clever things like, if we decided we didn't need, let's say we had a couple of DRMAs here, so we we didn't need this one. What it would do actually is it would actually stop any new requests coming into it first of all, I see. and then it would allow it gracefully die. Okay. And as soon as it's got no traffic on it, shut it down. I see. Does this sit in one AZ, or have you distributed the workload across multiple in different regions? So, so we always distribute it for reliability and resilience. A, a deployment will always be across three AZs. Okay. And depending on the particular operator or customer's needs, it may be across different uh, regions as well. I see. Yeah. And then also we have another RDS here. What does this represent in this So, So that is our data warehouse. So okay. we, uh, we collect events as they happen, and we report on them. We use a, a we can report ourselves using a, a, an application called Tableau, and we can also export data if oh, our customers or our operators want to see that as well. Very interesting. So essentially, this is where you can do reporting and other ad hoc exactly. um, queries against that. So as you were doing this, what did you learn You know, working through these uh, design principles? OK, so, so this, is actually, uh, this is actually about our third generation of this architecture and it's architected for the cloud. So we didn't start with a, a sort of an on-premise solution and then re-architect it for the cloud. This was designed from day one by our engineering and our architect and our product teams um, to be to to leverage the the scalability and the uh, 
the flexibility of the cloud. So for example, all of these nodes are designed to be stateless, specifically so they can leverage the Kubernetes and the cloud scaling technologies. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for walking us through this exciting uh, architecture. We talked about you know, the operators who uh, essentially provide the content to the user. They can use different devices. And then you provide the control mechanism as to you know, what content they're entitled to watch. Uh, by uh, leveraging the DRM, the core, the rules engine that is stored in RDS, and also data warehousing where you do backend reporting. Thank you, Mick, for being here and presenting this excellent architecture. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Yeah, of course. And thank you very much for watching This Is My Architecture.